Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, we're going to start things out with RDNA 3, as there have been numerous very interesting updates, actually, regarding AMD's upcoming next-generation GPUs. And then we're going to finish off with RTX 40, because, yeah, NVIDIA seems to have actually upgraded RTX 40 with some Hopper-related technology. So we'll be finishing the video off with that. But first, just a quick message from this video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. I think RDNA 3 is perhaps one of the most anticipated architectures in GPUs for a long time now. RTX 20, because it was bringing ray tracing to the mainstream, was also talked about extensively. But RDNA 3 just seems to be ticking so many boxes. It could be the first time that AMD has the performance crown, although, as always, that's with an asterisk. And also, the fact that it's going to be chiplet-based. Now, this is not the first chiplet-based GPU ever, but for gamers anyway, for high-performance graphics, this is going to really usher in quite a new age and give us a hint of what's to come in the future. Now, recently, Grayman on Twitter was stating that some of the performance information that they'd leaked regarding RDNA 3, specifically the N31 SKU, was actually incorrect. Long story short, they were claiming that uh, we're going to be seeing around 2.5 to 2.6 gigahertz back in the day, and now this clock frequency has been upgraded to closer to 3 gigahertz. And I have to say that this matches some information that I put out a couple of weeks or so back um, with specific N31 flagship SKUs, which were going to be around the 3 gigahertz range. Now, I want to stress that at the end of the day, the TDP for these cards, for the um, N31 SKUs, just to be really clear, is 375 to 450 watts. I believe, so far anyway, that the 450 watts will be for custom designs. Now, obviously, this is probably going to mean that those custom designs are able to go higher in their frequency. Just also to be doubly clear, this is for the game clock. This is not for base frequency. I've actually received a couple of very interesting updates for N31. The first of which is that, yeah, 3 gigahertz is almost certain at this point. Numerous other sources have reached out to me and essentially told me that 3 gigahertz for N31 is going to be pretty easy. Now, what I'm not so certain about is whether it's 3 gigahertz or just over 3 gigahertz, because frankly, at this stage, I've received both figures. It could be, again, depending on whether it's a custom design or not, I'm uncertain, but quite frankly, the clock frequency of this GPU is going to be absolutely just, it's just going to be insane. I'm also hearing that the memory is going to be 21 Gbps, with most likely, it seems that my earlier information of 512 megabytes of Infinity Cache does seem to be accurate. So it's going to have a crap ton, that's a technical term, of Infinity Cache thrown on die, which obviously is going to be powering this thing. Given it's not going to have a ton of memory bandwidth because we're only running with a 256-bit bus. This does make sense to me. Now, a couple of other small things. 256 shaders per work group processor has been announced, and well, not, not officially announced, but it's been leaked for so long now. But to my understanding, this doubling of stuff, quote-unquote, within the work group processor seems to extend beyond just the shaders. I'm even hearing things which are related to ray tracing have also seen a doubling as well. Now, bear in mind that we're also most likely looking at updated ray tracing intersection uh, hardware. RDNA 2's ray tracing stuff... <sighs> It wasn't the best. Let's just be honest. There's a reason, for example, the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 are kind of struggling with a lot of games. Um, yeah, you guys know the story. So for AMD to 
update A, the ray tracing IP within the GPU, and B, also just add more stuff within it to improve the performance. That all just makes sense to me. Now, switching gears to N33, and then we'll talk about performance targets. For N33, um, I'm hearing it's going to be even higher with clock frequency. Now, this is going to be a monolithic design, and it will be produced on the TSMC 6NM process. Again, no new information there. I am hearing, though, that the clock frequency for this card is absolutely just rapid. Um, so I had in another video leaked that it could be over 3 gigahertz, and my updated information, yeah. Um, with game clock anyway, we could be seeing well over 3 gigahertz, like well over 3 gigahertz. Um, I don't want to give the specific number at the moment because I've received like two or three. Um, and I'm not certain whether that's overclocked or not. But I can tell you guys that if AMD actually releases this silicon, how the design targets basically, if they basically, if they match the design targets I've been hearing with the clock frequency, we're going to be seeing, like, I can't even imagine what this thing is going to be capable of in the hands of overclockers. Like, it's going to be hitting GPU world frequencies. Um, there's not much else to say. The clock frequency is going to be well over 300, uh, sorry, 3000, not 300, 3000 megahertz. Like, I don't mean like 3100, I mean well over it for N33. And the Infinity Cache is going to be 128 megabytes. I'm almost certain at this stage. It's going to have 256, sorry, 128, excuse me, 128-bit bus. But it's going to have 21 GPPS memory. So not much changed in terms of the memory configuration that I had previously. But I did want to mention the performance because there's been a lot of discussion over the past few days regarding the performance. And... I believe at this point, for raster performance, we will be looking somewhere in the neighborhood of around 2.6 to 2.7, maybe, times faster than the 6900 XT. Quite honestly, I've received several different performance results. I've heard, uh, sorry, performance targets. I've heard 2.6, 2.7, 2.8. I'm going to say 2.7, um, but compute it's going to be well north of that it's going to be over three times because you can just do the math it's got like over 15,000 shaders you know even if you're running at a kind of a you know the, the slower speeds that we're hearing of like three gigahertz that's like a basically 90 tflops plus gpu which is going to be absolutely decimating it's going to absolutely crush it's going to annihilate the 69 nice 100 xt as for ray tracing I probably think it's going to be closer to four times faster. Um, RDNA 2's ray tracing performance, as we all know at this stage, is pretty awful. Um, it basically was... It's there as a feature. And if you've got tons of GPU performance left over, it's great. I suspect that the um, upgrade to FSR 2 is going to help a lot here. Obviously, it's a lot better in terms of visual quality. So if you have something like a 6800 XT and you're running uh, a monitor resolution of 1440p or even 4k if you're willing to drop the quality a little bit that's probably going to be doable but generally nvidia have had quite a large advantage over amd here and i think that uh, amd are not really going to want to be just left behind there just historically speaking amd are not going to just be like you know what we're okay with that weakness it's fine yeah, nvidia can constantly use that to just like smash us on the noggin with pr that's that's not that's not how AMD are rolling, damn it. Um, so I suspect that's going to be a really big thing. And again, just to reiterate what I've said previously, I think that the recent Sony patent that we saw, which I think is most likely pertaining to a PlayStation 5 Pro, probably is based on AMD's IP. That's not confirmation, but I think it probably is based upon what I've been hearing. I can't get anyone to tell me, yes, 100%, but it probably is. So long story short, RDNA 3 is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Um, and it goes back to what I mentioned about Phoenix a couple of videos ago. AMD just... They are going to demolish the low-performance GPUs because there is just absolutely no point the performance targets of Phoenix 
just it makes cards like the 2060 just absolutely just pointless and it's going to be nipping on the heels of cards like the 3060 um and obviously it's going to be cheaper for laptop manufacturers it's going to be producing less heat it's going to be using less power yada 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 and we can imagine exactly what amd could be doing with uh apus in the future like strix point which is just even nuttier honestly um now i'm not saying nvidia are totally screwed here uh i think nvidia probably will lose some market share this is by the way assuming amd can get all the software in order there's not major manufacturing issues with either amd or nvidia cards like for all we know you know we put one of the vendors into our pcie slot and suddenly you know it just explodes obviously that's not very realistic but you get the idea like at the end of the day until we know what the cards are capable of all of this is just fun conjecture even if lisa sue literally called me up on the phone right now she stopped the record uh, you know i had to stop the recording lisa sue called me up and told me these are the performance targets this is what our price is all of that stuff i'll be like great lisa when i see the cards when i'm holding the cards that's when i'll be 100 confident speaking of pricing though just real quick I don't think they're going to be cheap like n31 i reckon it's going to be over two thousand us dollars and and we're talking like cards here which basically are titan class i feel that n33 is going to be more reasonable quote unquote um you know maybe like 500 us dollars but it's imperative to realize that prices can change literally literally you know 10 minutes before the announcement um so yeah um you can kind of uh, just pray to the gods basically the cards are you know reasonably affordable and i feel that this is going to be much the same for rtx 4090 and other cards now some interesting things actually with ad 102 cup of t7 kimi essentially states that um we're going to be looking at a rather radically redesigned ad 102 versus what it was initially going to be now, unfortunately, I don't want, know exactly what the details are here, just that there are some major overhauls when it comes to the architecture itself. I believe it has more elements inspired by Hopper. That's what they've said anyway, and this kind of matches what I've been hearing. But honestly, NVIDIA have been keeping this stuff really, 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 really hush-hush. I did have a brief uh, conversation with them in DM yesterday about this, and one thing I've personally heard... And it doesn't really say too much, honestly, is that there is better utilization of the CUDA cores themselves because Ampere, there can be some times where elements of the GPU are basically doing nothing. You guys probably heard this yourself and I'm not going to, you know, t spend tons of video discussing a, a CUDA core utilization in the video because it's already gained lengthier than what I anticipated, but... I'm, I'm hearing that there have been some changes here. Now, I don't know what elements of Hopper have been bought over. One of my sources did tell me that there would be a refresh of... Um, wow, my brain has just gone completely blank. <laughs> refresh of Lovelace. So many blue code names going through my head. But I heard that that was going to be later and it would have perhaps a different caching structure. So I don't think that's actually what's being referenced here. I could be wrong. Ultimately... I don't think NVIDIA are just going to be going down without a fight. I suspect that this is going to be a really... It's going to be a really tightly fought battle. And I'm sure that people are going to say, well, yeah, but NVIDIA are like 600 watts. Is it? And to, again, until the cards release, we don't know. Like, it could, it could operate on one watt and, you know, you have to feed it pixie dust every morning. We don't know yet. But assuming it is 600 watts, obviously that's considerably more power hungry. Now, I personally think that it is 600 watts. But you could also start to do some other arguments like, is it better in ray tracing? What about upsampling? Blah, 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 blah. These are going to be questions that I suspect a lot of people are going to be asking themselves. I'm almost positive at this stage that DLSS free does exist i've had yet more people tell me that dlss free does exist and um one of the people who told me this also gave me the information that fsr2 was real and that back then they told me that it was not spatial it was going to be temporal and obviously that proved to be true but again they're telling me that dlss free does exist and a couple of other people have told me it does as well curiously they told me that the 
what was it they said exactly i don't remember the exact quote but something along the lines of ray tracing sees a bigger jump in performance over raster i don't know how that can be achieved i mean there are several ideas perhaps for example it um is running ray tracing at lower quality and then basically is upsampling somehow you guys can speculate in the comments down below because this video is going to get really long if i start going down that path but yeah i mean dlss3 i think is definitely an idea nvidia of course have been pushing what is it slipstream or whatever it is where obviously it's kind of like uh, basically an api which can be uh, implemented to game engines and then with that it can basically allow developers to target uh, just that and then nvidia's api will then run like fsr or xcss or uh, dlss or whatever i frankly would not be surprised if nvidia did let dlss run on competitive hardware that is not a leak that is not someone telling me that i'm just speculating because if i were nvidia i would not want xcss and fsr to get more adoption and one of the ways they could do that is to basically just let dlss run on competitive hardware and it could run on you know specific instructions depending on the other vendor but obviously it would still run faster on nvidia's own stuff or perhaps it would be more accurate or whatever uh maybe every like you know 30 seconds on a competitive hardware would be like see you should have gone with nvidia you know it'll be like a flashing sign <laughs> frankly i don't know uh again i'm not pushing that as a leak all i know is that nvidia would not want to lose dlss as a selling point in the market it would not want fsr2 or um xcss or whatever to become the de facto standard and don't forget that it's not just those you've got unreal engine which is pushing its own upscaling technology obviously sony i'm sure microsoft eventually will weigh in on this as well because why the hell not you know but it's it's going to be an interesting one that's all i'm going to tell you guys like i'm really interested to see what happens with the upscaling battle i feel that nvidia and amd and intel are going to be pushing this extensively it's going to be also really interesting to see how laptops are marketed with all of these different solutions as well especially because amd and intel can offer all in one um and obviously intel can essentially sell a kit for example to dell that's a lot of potential revenue that nvidia could be losing so i'll be very interested to see what nvidia's um answers are to that let's just say that i've rambled way too long um hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have you know what to do leave a like here on the video take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now